opportunity of course because it's something that I've been I really feel like guided to start this like years ago but I've just been resisting it for far too long and it really is just me being the medium to like recruit an abundance of people who are living their life on purpose and are proving it you know, like, like living proof and that's basically all that I want to prove to the world that like you can do it and it's a matter of just choosing to do it and um, of course it comes with a lot of like changing the mindset and um, trusting in basically what feels like nothing, but it is a grandiose like you know, of awesomeness. So um, I find it really fun, and that's what I hope, you know, can continue to show my audience and viewers um, that same inspiration that I find. So feel awesome. Awesome. so awesome. Well, congratulations on doing it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't an easy start. Yeah, I know that. And it never is, right? It's for, for those of us who want to achieve um, anything in life, great things in life, it's never going to be easy. And that's the whole point. It's always about how much you really want something in life, like how determined you are. Like, are you, are you willing to just give up on the first try or you're someone who's going to really follow that vision and dream and keep going no matter what it takes, right? Well, I'm Aquazina Hart, and um, I'm really, I'm really redefining in this moment how to come out to the world and tell people who I am because so much has changed recently in my life, um, so deeply, so many things have upgraded. So it doesn't feel fair to just be like, "Hey, I'm Aqua and this that." But what has, what stays stable is that I'm mother to Ocean, who's my little six-year-old going on seven little star child being who's lying right next to me right now as we do this uh talk together Thank you. hi Hello. Um, um yeah i you know i started a brand an academy years ago called sacred orgasmic living and uh sacred orgasmic dance was one of the practices of that academy of living and i also teach like tantra and sacred sexuality and do a lot of different healing work um, um and you know this this whole academy that i'm running and um sharing with everyone everything i'm doing through my work is a result of my own life and my own experiments and everything that i've lived and do and it's just basically teaching from a place of embodiment and i think that's how i can come back to your question so can you repeat your question to me and then I can give a really clear answer to that. <laughs> so of course it sounds like based upon maybe your own exposure to the tantric dancing and just really becoming, I guess it sounds like in love with yourself, of course, but experiencing this whole new fire that you didn't know existed within. Um, and then that of course, moving you forward to creating this um, huge desire and passion for creating something bigger than that, you know, to share with others. So it sounds That's, like the was yeah. it's um I've been on a very strong, deep journey of returning to being becoming a sovereign being. Um so may call that self love. If it, that's one way of um, describing it. And um for me it's letting go of all the conditionings and beliefs and um you know, the ways the sides told me I had to be or a person has to be. And for me, it's been a massive, a beautiful journey of letting go of um, everything that I'm not, everything that I was told that I should be or who I am and really, truly finding my own self, my expression, um, my deepest truth of who I am. And sacred orgasmic dance and sacred orgasmic living and the whole life I've been living has been that journey, actually through sacred sexuality, learning about sacred sexuality, to free myself of past guilt, shame, traumas, everything that, you know, stops you from being your best version. Um, dance for me has always been my medicine. And over the last few years, dance has completely taken over and changed my life. Literally like dance, the power of dance, the energy of dance, the 
healing of dance. I mean, the whole world's really into yoga and it's amazing yoga. I mean, I come from India. I understand the benefits of yoga and the science of yoga, but the way the Western world's taken it and distorted it, it's like really, you know, it really doesn't hold very much medicine anymore. It's become almost like another exercise fad or a ego trip fad or whatever you want to call it, right? For me, dance is liberation. Like you, when I dance, it's like I get lost in it and that's what I show others that, you know, we don't need to come here to learn anything. You're coming here to unlearn everything when you dance, right? So dance has been such a massive part of my journey. And it's almost like, yes, you said yesterday, someone came up to me and they're like, you know, how are you living the life you live just in a massive TV series with ITV America? It's coming out to millions of people in July and a Netflix series that I also filmed last year that's coming out in April. Also a huge show, two massive shows coming out this year. All through me constantly sharing my dance, my dance and myself. That's how I attracted these massive opportunities to now go very global this year, um, which I'm really excited about. And, you know, for me, it's like I manifested all that through my vibration, just through being authentically who I am. And that's what, you know, the more you show up for yourself and to serve others, without actually expect, ex, expecting anything in return, well, that's when the world shows up for you and that's when you can actually start playing, you know, on a bigger scale and actually, like, living out your dreams because you believe you can. <laughs> for sure. Um, so I assume you went through a couple of years of schooling. Was it in India then or elsewhere? I No, I was brought up in the UK. <clears throat> I have um, a Spanish, Persian, Indian background. I was brought up in the UK um, and I went to a private girls' school in the UK. Uh, yeah, my dad was really keen on education and I hated everyday school because of all the comfort, you know, confirmation, like all the conformity and the bitchy girls and just like, yeah, I, I was, I was, you know, I'm an indigo child. And I kind of, for me, like being stuck in authority and all that bullshit was just not my, it was just not really you know it wasn't made for me but on the other hand I'm really grateful because I got to learn many languages um, I speak seven languages now I got to learn many languages and I got to you know really um, yeah I got to I got to train in, in my intelligence I got to use my brain in many ways I got to learn many things and as much as I love being deeply spiritual today I'm really grateful for my education and to have um, had, you know, the opportunity to go to school, an amazing school, and learn mad skills and, you know, learn to speak properly. <laughs> and um, which is really important for me today because, you know, as I widen my, um, my, my audience and people and um, reach out more and more to the world with my service, it's really good to have, you know, um, communication skills and have learned things at school that are going to benefit me today to um, do the role that I came here to do. So it's all, it was all perfect, right? Like it's all, everything in your life that you've been through, that you go through, it's always perfect. It was designed. Like we are not doing anything. Like you're not doing anything. Like you have free will, right? As a human and with a soul, you have free will to decide how much you're going to engage with your higher self in every moment in your life and how much you can let your higher self play through you. But it's basically ultimately kind of written out. I mean, I had that moment in the shower yesterday. I was having a shower and whenever I'm in the water, I always have these downloads and connect, like this is my highest connection mostly nowadays. And literally I was like in the shower and I was just like, oh my God. I just thought about it for a moment. I was like, I've never ever done anything really. Like it always was happening. Like I just kept saying yes and showing up and being brave enough to follow certain streams of craziness <laughs> and do mad things, you know? But I was like, it was already set up. I already knew that that was going to happen. Like, I'm, like, I don't know if it's called being psychic or you, you're visioning it and happening or you just know that your soul has chosen this for you. But literally like, you know, I've just come to Puerto Escondido, like down to Mazunte right now and, you know, I think, you know, you've been following me for a while. I've been, I've been all over the world. I've been traveling so much with my son. And I knew that when I got here, this was going to be the place. And that's why it was like last on my radar 
let's say of the places I wanted to go to visit to, to see like homes and land, right? I just knew it. Maybe it's why I kept myself till the last so that I could keep traveling till I really got here. And I got here and it's been like the last few days have been so overwhelming because it's like that feeling of shit. I knew I was going to get here and I knew I was going to feel this. And I knew this is where I'm going to buy my land. And this is, and literally I was up till four o'clock in the morning. So I was a bit late this morning, four o'clock in the morning, like looking at lands, looking at cars to buy, looking at like everything, you know, like couldn't stop. And I was like, that's what it's it's being inspired. Like you don't sleep. You're just like, you know, you, you, you're like, yes, I'm making this happen. Um, and here we are, we're making, I'm making this next chapter of my life happen right now. That's so, so cool to hear. And, and of course, just to almost live through your own experience through the Instagram, which it's so silly that some people can influence someone to, like live their best life through that. But I think it's so powerful in the same sense because it is a tool and some people can abuse it or use it for greater good. And that's something I see that you're teaching your son, of course, and others to utilize. And it's just wonderful. Um, Mm. But beyond that, was part of your venture, um, you know, around the world, was that to find the land you said, or again, having that intuitive feeling, you knew you were going to end up where you're at now, but it was still a desire to, to see the planet, I'm sure. It's been such a crazy, yeah, no, it's been, it's been, it's been such a crazy journey. Um, back in 2012, I, I got married on 11, 11, 11. It was like my proper Indian wedding with a, an American man. Uh, we were married for over a year. We'd already done the civil wedding and we traveled around the world. And then we were doing like a family traditional wedding on 11, 11, 11. And um, the day after I walked out, I left the, I left my husband, I left the wedding, I left everything and I left. And I'd had enough, I'd had enough of drugs, I'd had enough of partying, I had enough of like the wildlife. I was like ready for something else in my life. My soul was basically like, we're done here. This chapter of our life is over. You're moving on. Like you don't have a choice. It was just like, and so I did. And I, the first thing I did was I was broken. I was depressed. I was fucked. Literally. I was just like, okay, I'm going to, I need to go fix myself. And so I went to the Osho ashram in Pune because my grandmother was um, a massive Osho follower. And my mom was also part of Osho for a long time. So I went there and I ended up doing sort of like a healing you could call it a healing course retreat, but it's a lot deeper than these retreats that are going on right now, which I, you know, anyway. Um, and it was a real, like, it was, it was the real deal. It's called the path of love. And it was like, a, I think it was two weeks. Yeah. Ten, two weeks. We had to be in silence. We weren't in the work, in the course itself, in the retreat the healing retreat and when we were in it it was just so strong and cathartic and like the most incredible thing I'd ever done and I just after that my life changed I knew that I had to bring that to the world in my own way and ever since like the last day of that retreat where we sat down our heart chakras all open everybody blasted wide open like like never before like really all our childhood trauma all our sexual trauma everything is all our fears, guilt, shame, all of it had been brought to the surface and just blasted out. Like we're sitting there, all of us, and we have to like draw visions. Like no, you know, just draw a vision. So I'm sitting there and I start to draw a, a community and a retreat center. And that was it. It's like, I'm going to, I want to bring, I want to, I want to do this with everyone. I want everyone to have access to this, but in a more modern, natural way, because it was, maybe not for everyone, like the way they do it. Like it's not like 20, 20 century enough type of thing. Right. So, and it was all around dance and tantra and liberation and freeing and screaming and getting wild and like women owning all their like man hating shit and men owning all their women hating shit and just super raw and awesome. And I was like, we all need this. Like, this is where we all are. And so that vision came through my heart in that moment. And it always stuck with me. Like I always knew that that was what I wanted to do. But then I had my son. Actually, after that, I did a lot of tantra training. I trained fully in tantra as a tantrika. The universe put like, 
the most amazing people in my path. Like the guy who, who was my partner on the path of love just turned out to be like one of the best tantra masters of the world. And they paired me up with him, like, you know, random. And he was like, at the end of the course, like, you know, I'm going to train you as a full on tantrika. A course that would cost you twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. He just like was like, I'm doing it as a gift because I feel like you've come for a reason. You're ready, and you need to be trained. So yeah, I went through some intense training. I did a lot of mushroom ceremonies for a long time, and the vision just got clearer and clearer. And then I got the vision that I had to have a little child, and then the ocean came through, called him through, and he's been a major part of what's about to be created because it's truly through having him. And being a mother to him that I realized that I lived and I want to live in community and I want to live, you know, I want a village. I want to make my own village and I want to show people how to live off the earth. I want to show people how I educate my son, how he lives from the earth, how he lives so naturally. And that's what people are also dying for, you know, to be re-educated of how to live from the earth, how to live simple, how to live, how to travel the world and earn money everywhere you go. And um, that's my vision right now is to build an iconic, iconic, completely never seen before, simple yet incredible community where, you know, we have animals, we have a lot of animals, a lot of horses, going to rescue a lot of horses around here, a lot of dogs, a lot of just beautiful animals that are free that we get to basically play with and heal with. They're not there for their milk or their eggs or their whatever we're there. They're there just to be with us, just for the resonance, just so we can also look after them and we can learn how to be with animals without owning them and just, you know, sharing space with them. And, um, yeah, growing our own food and I want a place for people to come and live off the earth and understand and feel what it is to live from the earth again and to be in community. So there'll be workshops, treats, all, all, all year round, just events, festivals, and yeah, it's called Utopia. That's the name, it's Utopia. And um, I've arrived in Puerto Escondido. I'm going to Mazunte today, just after the phone call, this, this call with you. Mazunte is actually um, the place that I've been feeling, but let's see, it's like finally, I'm, after all these years, I'm not going. But even just being in Puerto Escondido, which is the bigger town next to Mazunte, which I need to be in, you know, harmony with because no matter what happens, we're going to be um, doing stuff. I'm already in love here. I've already, I was supposed to be here a day. I've been here five, six days. Keep extending my hotel. And um, I've already been offered to work with four places here to organize the full moon, the new moon, all the events here. All I have three meetings in the next three days where I'm basically coming in as the goddess taking over and like injecting consciousness and ritual into all the parties here. Wow. That is yeah, I know. It's like insane. <laughs> Good time. Huh. Um, so I, you've been to Envision Festival, correct? Yes. Costa Rica? A handful of times or just once? Um, three times. Okay. Um, so I got the experience, like I was called to go um, the year I turned 21. Um, I went by myself, like bought a plane ticket with my tax refund and took myself to Costa Rica and emerged. Good on you, girl. Good on you, girl. <laughs> everything I needed and more. And it was one of the workshops um, that really shifted my whole um, really heart space 100% to being open and, of course, letting go. Very similar to what um, your 10 day <laughs> retreat sounded like. But this was like one, maybe like two hour workshop where you know, complete strangers are holding you and just forgiving you for the lack of love maybe your mother or father gave you. You know, we did like an angel walk and it was just an experience that, again, I never knew existed, could exist or have the power to transform and heal the way it did. And it left me like so, vulnerable, you know, very vulnerable and just open to the rest of the experience. Because um, basically that was like day one of the uh, festival and it was just, magical and i'll be honest i haven't um you know really been in that type of environment in, in some time it's really challenging where i live now it's mostly old retired people so a lot of that energy um, it's super damaging and i'm very aware of it but um essentially to be around that i feel is again what the world is needing and it's just so amazing to hear that 
you've listened and you're guided to these places as well and manifesting again what the world truly does need and that's that reconnection to the basic living of growing your own food with real animals and you know not pets of course and and intimacy you know like living in community where you feel safe where you feel heard, you can talk to people, you can express your emotions, you can be who you are, you can dress as you want, you can show your skin, you can, you know, you won't be judged, you'll be loved for exactly who you are. When your shadow comes up, your fears come up, your trauma comes up, you'll be held in the correct way to release that and not, you know, be thrown into an asylum or whatever it is or given medication. Um, which is what's going on in the world right now, right? It's like that kind of, um, yeah, society is lost. Society is totally lost. Um, I just filmed with ITV America and TNT, a very big, huge TV series. Um, to reality, I'm not really spoken about this so far. I'm not really meant to yet, but I'm going to say a little bit right now. It's a reality TV show that's coming out. It's huge. It's, one of the biggest things that I, I think I'll ever do in this lifetime. Um, and, you know, so people make Bachelor and all these other big things and TV series and it's a reality TV series on healing. So we did it, we filmed a retreat, one of the main healers on the retreat. And yeah, I got to share my medicine and myself and, you know, big things are coming. There's, this is going out to millions and millions and millions of people. There's going to be a lot of people watching this show, including maybe Oprah Winfrey and, you know, Marion Williamson and really other like people are going to watch the show. And I'm really ready this year for all the aftermath, you know, I've been ready a long time. And part of creating this community is to also be ready to be able to receive the flocks of people that are really going to like start to follow and connect with me. And, it's been a long time coming and I'm just like, yeah, I'm ready today. You know, like I'm very deeply seated in my purpose. I have full confidence in talking about who I am and what I do. I don't feel like I need to hide myself or embarrassed or that I'm arrogant or whatever. Like I speak very boldly to people about what I do and who I am because when you're on your purpose, that's how it goes. You know, like it's, you're not, you're not, it's not about you. It's not, a, it's not coming from an egoic place. It's coming from a place of service and, stepping up into your higher self and like right now I'm really channeling the goddess the feminine is really deeply working through me in order to like bring healing to this planet and you have to be brave enough to like assume that role and carry do that role and you know for me today I mean what I'm about to do is it scares the shit out of me fully and at the same time I'm super ready and like I'm almost it's almost bursting through me like I'm just like I'm waking I can't go to sleep anymore I'm waking up like you know and I'm just ready to go and smash the day and get things done and I'm just like literally like wanting it all to be like come on let's do it you know and let's get this done and now I'm ready and at the same time, you know, life has its timings and things work out when they're meant to and you know that yourself. And so, you know, I just take a deep breath and I'm just like, okay, flow. Like yesterday I got up and I was really exhausted. I didn't want to do anything. And I was kind of being a little bit what I would call lazy. And I could see how, you know, I was really torturing myself. Like with, you should be doing more, you're here. And like days are passing and you should be going out and doing this today and you should be going out and doing that. And it was just kind of like, Again, the doing and the masculine, like forcing myself. And I just said, what if you relax and let it come to you instead of actually going that way? Like, what if you just took a chill pill and sat back and just let it come to you and let's see what happens? And I, t I decided to go down that route. I said, just surrender. Just fucking surrender right now, you know? And as soon as I did, literally the phone started ringing my phone never rings and no one calls me I don't give my number to anyone and my phone started to like ring on the whatsapp whatever and basically like yeah they were all these event people I'd met like the day the two days before at the full moon party were all contacting me wanting to start to start like you know events and gigs and that's it that you have to you also have to trust how things are working out right you know like I definitely told everyone on my instagram page just last year that 2020 was the year I'd create my community <laughs> I'm the type of person when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. You know, I, I mean, I say a lot of things also, and I always choose the ones that I really want to do. Cause in the end I'm like, you're saying a lot of things and like choose what you really want to do and do those and forget the rest. So, but I do mostly do like everything that I say. 
um, I follow through. And if, if I don't follow through, I'll change something that I follow through on. So, um, yeah, you know, this for me, like, is, 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 is really important. It's really, really important. It's um, something that the world really needs, like, even for just on a personal level, you know. I can't live any other way anymore. Like, I have to live in a raw and wild place, free, and I need to live in community. And I want to wake up every morning and I want to dance with everybody. I want to meditate with all my tribe. I want to get everyone up watching the sunrise together and getting fit and healthy. And, you know, as one tribe, I want to start to, like, re-educate people to, like, how to start their life fully, like, in a positive affirmation way you know in a positive like stream so that they can go out into the world and do whatever they want to do with no limits because they believe in themselves they've got the energy to do it because a lot of times people want to do things you know and they're like oh it's not happening like why i'm doing the affirmations and i've got my i believe it's possible but it's just not happening i'm like because everything's energy and if you don't have the energy to do it like how are you going to do it it's not just good. It's not good enough having just the thoughts. You have to have the energy behind it, right? So that's kind of like, yeah, I feel like that's where as humans we need to help each other to like um, raise the vibration. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and it looks so different for everyone. You know, a lot of mine just comes through. Um, I was born and raised in Florida, so it's a very sunshiny state. Um, so simply going outside for like 10, 15 minutes and having the sensation of the sun just like ignites something within me that I really can't compare to anything else. Uh, but beyond that, it's just being in an open space and remembering that, you know, I am who I am, not based upon my other experiences, but really being grounded. And again, that really positive belief system of like, it's all kind of made up, right? <laughs> like you can separate yourself from it and it's not, Again, something that's taught through our education system, but through a journey of just tapping into different resources like um, Abraham Hicks and, you know, other readings and whoever else might have inspired, you know, your teachings. But it's for me, people who have discovered their path on their own, you know, and um, it's just great that we have these again, tools and resources to share with one another, but it's a matter of of doing it right like that law of attraction when I first heard about the secret it's like oh yeah you just ask believe receive you can't lay in bed and just ask believe and receive all day you know you gotta create that energy vortex for yourself um, and be open to receiving those um, good things that you're asking for no absolutely it's um I mean, you came here to experience this life, right? You came here for the experience. If everything was just going to always come to you just because you thought about it, then there wouldn't be much fun to it all. You might as well just stay up there, um, right? So we come into this, to this, this plane, this human earth plane to, yeah, to experience it all. And it's not easy. Life's not, life's, you know, this, this whole life human journey is, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's challenging, it's hard, it's, it's everything. It's the whole spectrum of all of it, you know? I mean, I've had moments where I'm just like, take me away from this planet already, you know? So many times. <clears throat> um, and it's only been a massive shift in my perspective that has um, changed things because today, I get up eager and happy to enjoy life because I've changed my mindset so much, you know? It's really surrendered now. I mean, yes, I have goals. Yes, I have this task and mission to undertake for a bigger cause, not even about me. And when I was making it about me, well, that's when it was hard. Because I felt I had to achieve something and I felt I had to do it all and I felt like it was all me doing it all and how am I going to find land and how am I going to finance the land and how am I going to do it all and how am I going to build and that's when it became super overwhelming to create in my dream, right? And that's what was kind of going on for years when I was traveling. It was, it was that kind of vibration that was going on of like me thinking I was in charge of doing everything and not feeling up to the, up, up for it, not feeling like I could, like who am I to do this? I can't do this. And it was only this year 
well, actually, after I created my abundance course and I did the abundance course, which changed many, many, many people's lives and changed my life entirely, creating that course, brought massive amounts of abundance into my life and other people's. Then I realized, I was like, okay, finally get it. Like, hey, I'm just like, I'm literally like the helper for, you know, God and goddess out there. Like, I'm just literally serving and channeling this higher force. I don't need to do anything. What I do need to do, though, is, you know, stay healthy, stay healthy, stay strong, stay energetic, stay aligned and really, really connect myself as much to my higher self so that I can then just like be that like easy stream streamer, right? You know, so I don't really have to do much, but like I will receive guidance. I will listen. I will hear and I will execute. And that's basically, that's why I'm in such a good place today. And that's why it's all manifesting faster than I can even like deal with it, you know, because it's just like, I'm there. I mean, it, joyful, positive, super connected, super sure place of what I'm doing, who I'm doing it for and why I'm doing it. And so instead of me getting up and going, oh my God, I got to, I got to go find this or I got to go search for this or, you know, like who, who is it that we need to attract in? Awesome. So we need to attract these people in. And I just start my day with uh, knowing that, okay, I'm going to follow my internal guidance today and go where I have to go and do what I have to do. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to work out. Like I'm going to attract the things and the people I need effortlessly, but I need to listen to my guidance. So if my heart's like, I need to go to that random coffee shop over there for a coffee, even though I don't drink coffee, but I'm going to have a coffee today. I want to go over there and go have the coffee. And hey, presto, I get a coffee. And, you know... I meet a builder who builds adobe houses and that's how it goes and that's how it works and it's trusting that and I feel like I'm actually about to enter a very whole, a huge, a whole nother level dimension of that kind of play right now because I'm on the cusp of like starting to really build what I'm about to build, you know, it's right now we're still finalizing the plans, but uh, <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really excited to journey, to document and journey and to, to, to film all this journey. And I feel like that's going to really show others how you do it, like how you manifest and how you become a channel and give people more hope to realize, you know, to, to do more things and not think that like, how can I do it? Sure. Um, so do you mind if I ask if you do resonate with any one belief system or you're kind of, you know, aligned with all of, you know, your religion is love, of course, because that is the most powerful, like, belief there is. And it all comes from that same source. I, um, wow, that's a cool question because, yes, love is my religion. And, yes, I just believe in being a radically positive master. <laughs> like, no, there's no room for victimhood anymore, really. Like, I wish. Sometimes I wish I could have someone to blame about something, but you don't. Um, but recently I have this incredible virgin, the Virgin of Guadalupe, this, the, the, the goddess saint of Mexico, who has entered my life, um, channeling through me. And um, I'm not from a Catholic or Christian background. And for me to have come to Mexico and to have received her blessings and have really started to connect with her and see her everywhere and feel her deeply has been really um, a massive um, boost of faith for me this year. Like as soon as I got to Mexico this year, she basically appeared to me and um, has been guiding me through my journey here in Mexico and she's guiding me fully and she's very much part of the whole, she is the one who's making this all happen. It's like, cause this is a, this is a place of the goddess that I'm creating. It's gonna be a massive goddess temple. And yeah, you know, so um, I do believe in the Virgin of Guadalupe. I do believe in the saints. I do believe in Yeshua, Jesus. I, I believe in the energy. I believe in the ascended mastery aspect of these uh, beautiful souls. Um, and beings, um, I don't believe in any religions for sure. 
Um, and I just believe that, you know, we are all, we are all part goddess, God, um, as descended, ascending, um, you know, we are all holy and every single one of us is not, there's not, I, I'll be honest with you. There are certain people in my life that I'd look at and go, really, you are also God and goddess. Like you really also came from the same creator and you're also made of the same stardust that I am. Okay. I'm going to need some time to believe that and to like work, work that, work, work around that in my heart and in my head. Right. Like that's my honest truth. Like there are times I see some people and I'm really like, wow. Like, what, like, how can we come from the same planet? But, you know, deep down, that's also been my lesson, my lesson in life of compassion and um, just, you know, um, understanding that dark has to exist with light. It's how we learn and grow. Um, even the dark is very holy and has its place and significance. And um, recognizing that darkness in myself in some ways and owning that as well. You know, and you know, a lot of times we, when we talk about these sacred mirrors or mirrors, got a really beautiful post from my mum yesterday that I it's probably the best post she's ever sent me. Um, and it was, um, you know, saying that we don't just attract what we are, we attract those that need what we are or what we have, and that's so true for me today. Like, I'm not attracting a lot of people anymore that are representing who I am, that's for sure. I can see that very clearly, you know. Like, that's for sure. Like, I can say that surely. I don't need spiritual bypassing at this point. Like, that's for sure. But what I did recognize is that, yes, these people are coming to me and are attracted to me because there are definitely things that I hold that they can benefit from, you know? And they also hold things that I can benefit from. It's always a two-way story, right? It's not like I'm just here showing up and going, hey, I've got something to show you. I don't, I'm not talking about sense. It's always a two-way, but I'm definitely not a mirror in the terms of like the direct mirror. And that's something that's really important for me to communicate right now because everyone thinks like, oh, that's a mirror. And then, oh my God, so this evil, nasty person is who I am. And it's like, no, it's who you're not. Right. It's who you maybe once were, but it's what you're seeing in a mirror that you're not anymore. And it's what's showing you so clearly that once upon a time, you probably were similar to this person maybe, but now you're not. Like I just had a girlfriend traveling with me and such a big mirror to who I'm not anymore and what I don't want to ever be again. And like how, you know, but also a mirror to like, yeah, I was there once. So have compassion, right? Like I was there once also. So having compassion for like, just, you know, the part of her journey, the whole spiritual denial that she's in, mm -hmm. you know, and the spiritual bullshit we put up within ourselves and all the excuses we make to like, delude ourselves from our truths rather than owning it, you know, and all this proving that people do. Like, what are you trying to pre prove in? You know, like, if you bless your food, don't tell me you bless your food. You know, if you sage the room to clean the demons, don't tell me that. You don't need to wake up every morning and tell me, oh, I've just been channeling, like, Yeshua and God knows what. And, like, now, like, part of massive healing. It's like, I don't need to know. Like, it's for you. Do it. Right? You know, so this is what I'm talking when it comes to spiritual delusion. It's like proving to everyone how spiritually enlightened you are all the time. And I think, and it's like, you know, we've all done that. We've all been there. There's always, we've all been through a point where we need to keep proving ourselves till it finally becomes an embodiment. And then it's like, yeah, you can talk about things because you talk about your life, right? And your stories, but you don't need to prove yourself because energy never lies. And once you get that and you realize your power and you realize your energy, then you just embody and live it. And it doesn't matter who's, it doesn't matter what people think of you or what people like, you know, people are always going to hate you. If you're a strong, powerful person. People are always going to hate you. It's normal because, you know, it's like you're going to trigger everyone's shit all the time. <laughs> it's like if you don't trigger people's shit, then you're not powerful. Like simple as, like just, get, get, I'm sorry, but this is how it goes, you know. You're just like, you're just feeding the masses what they want to hear. Yay. You know, it's like, yay. They like, awesome. <laughs> but. Um, for sure. So it's, you know, the whole externally searching for what you maybe think is your purpose. Um, my very first person I interviewed, um, that's kind of what she discussed on is the, like how to discover your purpose. And it's not, you know, trying to act perfect, look perfect and be this perfect person. It's finding like, the power within yourself again 
and validating and confirming through yourself that this is who I am, not what the world wants me to be, what I think the world views me as, etc. It's who you're comfortable, you know, living in your skin as. And again, it takes a lot of reprogramming, reconditioning, whatever you want to call it, but it, it, it is real work that you have to commit to and you're not paid for it. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's your true authentic expression. It's the, it's the one, like I can talk from a place of embodiment and, and true, like truly stepping into my purpose today of how it feels compared to who I was maybe like a couple of years ago. And it's not giving a fuck. <laughs> and it's really strong. Like I went out to full moon party the day with like a snakeskin tiny bikini, beautiful white goddess skirt, like full face body paint, like this massive silver armor um, body chain, like all with like crystals and moons. I mean, I was the only one there dressed like that in like a party of 500 people, you know? And when, when I danced, I like unleashed, I got into my zone and I unleashed and I went for it, you know, my sacred orgasmic dance. And it was because of that, that like I got all these gigs and wanting to work with me now. Why? Because they can see, they can see that this person is like truly in her authentic expression. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's an, like, you know, it's an, like even when they casted me for this TV show, she was like, it looks like you're just embodied in what you teach and who you are. Like it's all over you. And it's true that I, this, this, what I see, when I look in the mirror and look at myself, the way I dress, the way I have my tattoos, the way I have my jewelry, the way I am, like, I sometimes go, oh my God, how did you get, to, like, how did it become this, right? I used to work in corporate America. I used to work like suit, I used to wear a suit and heels and be really straight cut, you know, like interview presidents and prime ministers around the world. That was my job for a long time, you know, in, really like a very different life to like really embody this wild, free, juicy, sensual, authentic woman. Like how did like, how did that happen? Like what was the progress of that? And that was just like constantly like stepping into like my truer and more real expression of myself. So like, you know, rather than truly clothes of what would people think, it was like, do I, how do I feel wearing this? Do I want to wear this big fat red choker? Yeah, I do. Do I want to wear like, you know, um, big red lipstick today? Yes, I do. Do I want to wear that on my arm? Yes, I, I do. You know, like it's just, you know, do I want to like wear hardly any clothes today? Yeah, it feels super hot. Great, go out and do that, you know? And like, it's not, whereas in the past it was like, what are people going to think about me? What are people going to say? Like, how will people take this? Like, do I look too glamorous? Do I look too beautiful? Do I look too sexy? Will the girls hate me at this party? Will everyone hate on me? You know, it's like, and now like the last few parties I've been to, I just like strip down and I go and I dance like a crazy woman on the dance floor with nobody. I don't care. There's nobody on the dance floor and I'm the only one and I'm ripping loose, you know? And, and, and I can see people's reaction. People are like, oh my God, like this woman is courageous. She's courageous. Like she's fearless. Like, you know, like I, you know, you see it in everyone's face and I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm, that's true. Like, that's where I'm at. Like, I'm not, I don't care what anybody thinks anymore. Like I'm done. Like I'm seriously done. It's not my problem anymore. You know? That is so refreshing to hear. I'm working on that one as, as we speak, but no, it really, I think becomes a, yeah, affirming and committing that, how can you give a fuck? It's an energy drainer completely, you know, to care. And that's their own, their lack thereof again, right? It's like... Let's take it even a trip. Let's take it a trip further. There is nobody else out there. This is all your creation. There's nobody even out there to look at you. Like even those, all those people you think are looking at you, they're not even looking at you. They're not even real. Like they're in your imagination, you know? And that's the craziest part is that it's all your trip. It's all your creation. And it's all your trip. So... Whenever I see myself doing that, if I ever go back to that, like, feeling, like, at that party the other night, like, there was so much attention on me that at one point I started to, like, have to breathe deep because I could feel all the jealousy of the women and the way they were just, like, you know? And I just started laughing and I just started breathing out and I was like, they don't even exist, baby. I'm like, it's all, you're just creating that in your head. And it was true. It was me thinking about it, so it was in my head. And the minute I was like, I'm free, 
it was there was nothing there and I was like oh my god I was like this is so easy now you know playing this game of letting things go it's like just a, a moment chip change in my head so yeah it was really cool to like have those moments of realizations like you know and do the work the internal work of going it's all in your head <laughs> so you did say you you worked in a corporate background before <laughs> Yes, I worked with banks and I used to also work um, with a sort of like an international media company. I used to interview presidents and prime ministers um, and make country branding reports. It would help like emerging market countries like Brazil, India, Nigeria, wherever to, um, yeah, to, you know, to, to, to help their country to go economically, politically, socially, um, Learned a lot about the world, learned a lot about, you know, what was going on. Um, learned mad communication skills, of course, negotiation skills. Um, and yeah, it was one of my biggest awakenings because, you know, I like traveling around the world, being away from your family, your loved ones, you know, doing this work really got me to be alone and sovereign and learn to just like, yeah learn to, to be okay alone in these foreign countries and set me up for travel too. Got me really having the travel bug after, you know, a company pays you to travel all over the world and do amazing things and you just get, you know. So it was a big part of my life. I definitely am, I think about that time a lot and I'm very grateful for that, having had that experience. Like not many people get to experience such incredible highs and lows um, always, you know. Um, I definitely need to write a book at some point, which I will get down to once I have a solid home. Like right now, I'm not, like you may have noticed on Facebook, on, on Instagram, my social media, um, you know, I'm not really sharing that much, like the way, like kind of more teaching sharing or creating courses or creating groups or doing the things that I'm always doing. Like I'm not really, or even selling my jewelry and clothes. Like I'm not doing a lot of that right now because I'm really concentrating on getting this project up and going. And as much as I want to serve everyone and keep doing that, I need to concentrate right now on this bigger project. And I want to bring this through um, before I create anything else online because I need to create, I need to give all my energy to this project right now. Um, but I do feel, you know, some, I wake up some mornings and I just, I really feel like, Oh my God, I want to do more videos. I want to talk more. I want to share more. I want to like, like I've got so many ideas and plans of what I want to do and how I'm going to do it. And like, you know, it's just, it really is sometimes in life you have to just kind of take a step back or step out to do some, you know, to, to do other things um, which are going to catapult you even further when you come back type of thing. So yeah, that's where it's at right now. <laughs> Um, so do you still, I'm sure you still spend time, of course, writing down those ideas, like, because you're not, not going to lose the idea of them, but to, I think, write them down. For me, anyways, it works like it's that much more powerful when I can read, again, what I've wanted and reflect on, okay, is that actually what I want now? Or is it something that I wanted at that moment? Um, for <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hear you. I mean... I have that many ideas, babe, that like I don't write them all down because there's just so many, like when you tap into a really high creation field, it's just like, shh. it's like almost like, oh, you know, I write down the ones that really, really, really feel, just the ones that really, really feel really juicy and like I want to do them. Like that's it. It's like there are lots of ideas, but what do you want to do? What do you really, what feels good? What do you really, really, really want to do? So for me, it's like, what do you really, really want to do at this point? And um, one of the new things I'm creating is I want to create a massive online platform for all women, a group to join, which is going to be absolutely free. Um, and, um, you know, it's going to be an online women's group that basically it's just to connect with women and get all women in sync with their moon cycles and the womb wisdom work. That's one that I'm building right now and um, trying to like, I mean, it's just, the minute I launch it, it's just going to be a lot, a lot of women coming on. It's going to be, and I want to really keep up with it. So I'm just kind of taking my time. I'm the type of person, like I'd say I'm going to do something and then I launch it after and then it's all this pressure on me. Like with all my courses, everything, it's like, yeah, I'm going to make this course. And it's like, fuck, I told him I'm making this course and I'm going to make this course. So then I like, you know, it's, and then it's all this pressure 
And now I've realized that that's, well, that was great in the past and it worked. It served me when I was like a bit lazier and needed a bit more of a self-motivating push to like make things happen rather than just be like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Now I've realized that I'm at a place where I'm in kind of good flow of like creation, creating things and stuff. So now I'm like, I will create it and then I'll launch it and tell everyone like it's ready, right? Because it's just so much easier to deal with the aftermath um, than like how I was doing it before. Because I really like, you know, I'm a one woman show. I'm traveling. I've got my son. I'm doing my jewelry. I'm like looking for land. I'm doing workshops and private sessions. And then I'm doing like online courses. I'm doing a lot of things all the time. And I'm also living life. Like I'm actually living life itself. And really into my life and enjoying my life. And so that takes up a lot of time. Um, I'm not one of these like, you know, Bali coaches who just spend their whole life doing only that. And that's all they ever do. And that's all they ever talk about. That's not <clears throat> my way or style. I'm all about living what you're teaching. <laughs> Although I don't bother teaching you, you know, like that's what I wanted to write the other day. And then sometimes I'm like, don't be a bitch. But I'm not trying to be a bitch. I'm just trying to be a little, you know, Trying to be a little, uh, 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 just edgy with people. But it's like, it's just, I just like feel like saying something, you know, if half these coaches actually live the life that they coach others to live, like they wouldn't even need to coach. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just, I, it, it do. I do get a little, like, my feathers get ruffled a little from all these <clears throat> wannabe coaches out there who clearly are not, who need to coach themselves first. First. You just find yeah. it a little contradicting that they're like making a living off of not living an authentic life in a way. Yeah, you know, it's like trying to teach others what you don't have yourself. I mean, that you're so far from yourself and, you know, and making money off that. And, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like I'm an amazing coach. I just don't like to, don't have the time or just don't really enjoy doing this whole one to one coaching and having. You know, people are like, oh, you could have 10 clients and have them for 20 grand a year and that's like 100 grand, whatever it is. Like, I don't know. You know, and I don't, I just don't think like that. It's not my way of thinking. Like, that's not why I do it. It's not what it's about for me. I, I just share, I'm always coaching for free and sharing everything on, on Instagram and just constantly like showing up and being me and being an actual coach. And, you know, I love it like that. I'd love to do like now in the retreat center I'm creating in the center I'd love to like, yeah, have a whole tribe come and we wake up and it's almost like a retreat. That's how I'd like to coach like in person and we sit together and just me like this talking with you and just this transmission of codes, you know, and that for me is a much more natural way. And even when you're at my place, like, you know, you, people will see how I live, people will see how I am and that will be a natural way to just transmit those codes too, you know, and of course, we all need to know our worth and earn a living. And, you know, um, I like to like make money. I love money. I'm not saying I don't. I have no worries with money. But I don't need to, like, make money at the expense of, you know, I don't know, my own soul and my own life and someone else's as well because that's what's going on with a lot of these coaches. It's their own life, their own soul. It's at the expense of their own experience. I actually feel sorry for them, you know, because – they're not really truly enjoying life as they, they're just trying. Again, I see that. I like the stony people, you know, I, they're on my Instagram and I know them from Bali. And every time they post comes up, I'm just like, yawn. Like, I really feel for them. I'm like, why don't you just live your life and be happy? Why are you always chasing clients and trying to prove yourself to be like an amazing coach? Like, I've got 20 new clients today. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Like, you know, the, the law of attraction works. But I don't, go enjoy yourself a little more, you know? Like, it's great to have 20 clients. I'm glad you're helping those 20 clients. I'm glad you're attracting them and you're able to, like, know your worth and do your work. I'm all for that. But please go enjoy yourself a little more. Well, for me, like, to hear 20 clients, that's potentially 20 hours a week. If you're doing an hour, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, of course, that has now been removed from their basically self-work that they more or less need more than those third clients. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that's the thing, like, 
I'm going to say it, you know, a lot of those coaches have just got a lot of work to do on themselves still. Mindset is not like, you know, you don't just evolve from having a different mindset and that's what they're all doing. They're just talking. It's all talk, talk, and then do some yoga and do some meditation. But that's like, that's like so comfortable and numbing. And like, how is that going to make you freaking grow? You know, like life, like living life. Like the reason I grew fast is because I just lived life. I lived life. I never made it about money. I never made it about career. I made it about life and like crazy challenges and like really fully living in totality. And, you know, okay, it's not for everyone. I get that. But it is for everyone. We're all the same. We all came here to evolve. We all came here. Yeah, we will all do it in different ways. I'm not saying I am extreme and I get that, you know, I am a way shower. I've come to be a leader. I get it now. Now I'm like, okay, you're not crazy. You just had to have a crazy role, you know, but, but I still feel, I still want to push people to just be a little bit more crazy, a little more adventurous, a little more sparky, a little more fiery, a little more daring, a little more courageous, you know, and step out your comfort zones a little bit more. Where it's where the real, it's where the real growth happens. So yeah, that was, that's basically always going to be my message. It's like, like live this life. I mean, I know, like, I started doing, like, my online courses and coaching people this summer. And my God, like, the amount of time it was taking up out of my life and that I wasn't doing anything else and I wasn't even with my child. I was like, no way. I was like, I don't care how much money I've made this month. And it was a lot of money. I don't care, you know, how many people need the help too. I want to help loads of people, but not at the expense of my own life and not at the expense of, like, my child's time. Like, no, I'm going to be selfish. <laughs> like, no, <sighs> you know? So this is why I'm building the center. So I can help people still, still do my thing. And people can come be part of it and like hang out. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So that, um, you know, for me again, growing up in a very, it's just like a retire, retire capital of like our nation of the United States here. <laughs> it's Naples, Florida, but yeah, it's a lot of old money, you know, retired people who have, they've done their work and you know they're living they're living right <laughs> for lack of it but it's yeah, yeah. they're living their retirement yeah they're living by going out and playing golf in the morning and <laughs> going out to restaurants which hey i'm thankful for them sharing their tip money with me that's how i make an income but beyond that it's a whole next generation authentic living you know expansion that's happening that you're creating of course um and embodying and you know your son is just so delightful to see and it's an amazing thing to really witness and compare to like how what what world i've grown up in of course but what can be recreated for for others to thrive in and live in um and it really really does excite me um i guess where do you uh you want to help mostly children at this point or is it, you know, troubled youth? Like if you could, I guess, yeah, help one age group or, or any individual, like where, where does it start for you? Of course, families who are wanting to even heal within, like. I think it, for me, it's, it's everyone, it's, it's everyone and anyone who's, who's ready to upgrade, you know? I mean, I definitely also, um, you know, we'll be working a lot with children because I'm creating like a, an avatar academy for the kids. And obviously I have my own little boy. So he is a big part of what's going on in my life. So yeah, definitely. But I equally work, want to work a lot with women and help women to step up and um, really become the new feminine leaders of the new earth. I want to help men you know I really I really feel for men and I want to help them a lot because they really need a lot of help oh poor men um no victims though but you know what I mean um and um yeah you know I can't really say that it's one category in any sense I don't I don't have a specific niche it's just um I feel like there's going to be all walks of people coming to Utopia. Um, 
it's a, it's going to be an application um, community, you know, so it's not like anyone can just come in and just be there. I'm going to be very selective. Also, I will only allow and receive people who've already done some work on themselves and are open to the next level because I'm like, you know, working on a very different high dimensional level of healing right now. Um, if it's like beginner spirituality, then it's not really the place to come to, to be with us. Um, because we will blow your mind too fast. Um, you know, but if you have already entered the world of spirituality and understood some fundamental, basic, important, relevant information about awakening and who you are and are ready for the next level, then you know, we are we are where you would come to 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 enter that next level of of awakening, basically. You know, it's a higher dimensional awakening center because we'll be doing a lot of plant medicine ceremonies. I'll be hosting mushroom ceremonies myself. I work with the mushroom plant medicine, um, my guardian for them. And um, we'll be doing, yeah, we'll be doing a lot of stuff that's really going to like change people's lives on a very, very, very profound level. So people have to be ready for that, you know? And um I, I trust I trust in the path, I trust in 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 who I will attract and what will happen and who knows, you know, maybe at some point I will just work with certain youth age or just certain kids age or you know, I really also wanna work a lot with um basically like drug addictions and drug people who have drug addictions and help them to see a different way to live life because I come from a background where drugs are a huge part of my life and I lost a lot I lost all the men in my life to drugs all of them actually every single one mostly um so I it's something that's really dear and near to my heart and something that I've always said that I would like to do in my life is to help people to yeah go sober you know like get off get off the drugs and find that orgasmic nature within so they don't need the drugs anymore um and yeah that's that's probably and and then and then i and then i want to work with mothers too you know i want to work with conscious birthing and mothers and show like help women to like birth naturally and have like postpartum care and prenatal care and you know so it's like i said it's 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 huge and it's actually the place i'm creating is going to encompass all of this all of it there'll be like a section for all of it like it's like i said it's going to be iconic <laughs> like really there's no there's no other words but people are going to want to come from all over the world to to experience what we're going to create i mean i've traveled in over 100 countries i've worked with thousands of healers i imagine what i have in here like what i've seen and what i've you know registered and like now it's time to create from that all that so i can only i don't even know myself what's about to happen but it's going to be a good one. <laughs> cool. And I'm, I can't express how honored I am and super grateful that you've taken the time of today. And this is great because I know it's just the beginning for myself and you for this whole new 2020 vision, this manifest into what we've come to do. And it literally gives me chills because I know that's my soul. Just realigning into what it's been so distant from for, for, what seems like forever. I'm 26 years old. So um, it's really a, a beautiful time to be alive and to have, again, all these like tools and resources just to engage in this moment is, is powerful. And again, thank you. Thank you for, for doing your work. Um, for thank you. Thank you for showing up with you. Okay. Thank you very much for this interview and this talk together because I realized this morning as I was brushing my teeth, I was like, you know, nothing happens by accident and everything's divine timing and you interviewing me and asking me to talk about my vision is bringing it in. Bring, it's the first time I'm talking about my vision publicly to anybody. It's the first time you're the first person that I'm sharing all this information with because for a long time I've been wanting to be very quiet about my plans and what I'm doing and now I'm like, no, I'm willing to share. It's, you know, and it's it helps to bring it into form because the more you you know feel it talk about it embody it well then you're just attracting it in more and more like i just got look at that <laughs> got 
all massive, like my hair just stood up on end, every like spiritual. So, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your patience. And yeah, uh, thank you. I, I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy these beautiful um, interviews and talking because it's really a moment to also, you know, share important messages that people need to hear. And, and I get to reflect a little bit on my, my crazy journey and how far I've come. And, and just like, yeah, you know, it's, it's good to, to, to give others that permission too. To be like, hey guys, like, if I can do it, you can do it, you know? Yeah. We're all in this together. <laughs> Again, this, this full intention for the podcast, which is why I think it's really unfolding the way I intended it to do, right? I'm just things are just falling into place. Like, again, articles, just like, oh, how do you build your brand? Or not even that, but like, build a podcast under $100. It's like kind of how it started, right? And then from oh. that, it's like, oh, no, just the people, you have all, like a list of people. Don't be afraid to ask because most of these people are very, again, confident in their business plan, their purpose of whatever they've created and their mission for that. And they're comfortable again with speaking that because it's their truth <laughs> and it's, it's really it's really I love you know and I love listening to podcasts like when I'm driving the car or when I'm just at wherever like I, I love listening to the different people's podcasts and 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 learning from others so you know I think it's a great way to 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 to, to exchange information nowadays um because, you know, people are commuting so much and they've got time to sit and listen. So, you know, interesting podcasts are always going to attract in, like, yeah, a lot of people. So my little boy's on his, on his, on his phone. Like, can you switch it off for one minute till I finish, please? Um, I did have one more question, I, and I meant to ask that when we were on, this, on the topic. But is he giving you ideas, of course, as to what he envisions with this? retreat center and such or not yeah for sure ocean and i uh, always sit together and um you know get go to the drawing board we go to the drawing board together and he's already visualized um amazing outdoor kids pool with all these bamboo slides that slide off the top of the tree house and then using a boat for a, a room like yeah he he always has multiple ideas and shares them with me and he will be creating, he will be hands on in the creation of the center. Like in all ways help, he's going to grow the garden from the scratch. He'll be even building with us and he'll definitely have um, a big say in the design of his tree house. So yeah, there, that's, uh, that's basically all of the vision and everything. And, um, yeah, right now I'm redoing my whole website, which will be aquazinaheart.com very soon. We'll have everything on it. Um, I still have my abundance time ready, and um, we probably will be putting up sacred orgasmic living. It's just basically, yeah, I'm just in the middle of like rebranding, recreating everything so that it really aligns with my new 2020 vision. But there's a, yeah, there's the TV series that's coming out in July that's called The Lost Resort on. It's like TNT, um, ITV America, main TV channel. I'm sure I can. There'll be more information coming out on that when um, when it's nearer the time and I'm allowed to. Um, and I also um, filmed for a Netflix TV series taught sacred orgasmic dance to some celebrities, and um, that's coming out in April. So yeah, you know, for anyone who's listening and wants to stay in touch or work with me in any way, then. The best way is Instagram right now. It's like my Aqua and Ocean page. It's my personal page with my son, um, you know, and I'm always, yeah, I'll be, I'll be putting all the information there for things that are to come. We'll inspire the masses together. We got a big movement ahead. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye.